the third in a series of common code examples in Oracle Mobile Cloud Service. Now, if you didn't watch the last two episodes, go back and watch them right now. This episode won't make a lot of sense. Otherwise, welcome back. Let's kick on. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So the big picture is here. We're working through a common NCS node code block, along with different pieces of code to deal with the request and the responses. Now, in terms of receiving requests and calling other services and dealing with their responses, and eventually returning a response to the mobile client, MCS will push you to work with JSON payloads and shaping the response to provide optimized small payloads for mobile consumption. And because of this, within your Node JavaScript code, you need to be familiar with working with JSON objects, including how to access the elements, convert string JSON documents to JSON objects, and vice versa. So in our code, we can define a JSON object like the following. Now note how JavaScript, unlike other languages such as Java, allows you to literally code a raw JSON object into the JavaScript syntax. You don't have to have it as a string first, then pass it to some sort of conversion function that will give you a JSON object back. Now continuing with the examples here, say we want to access the person's surname. And again, JavaScript has great support here because all we need to do is call person.lastname. In addition, if we want to address, say, the person's street address, which is a nested element, we call person.address.streetaddress. Pretty exa a simple example, you'd agree. Now, somewhat more complex, if we want to access the person's office phone number, we use person.phone numbers, and as we want to, say, access the end element in the phone number zero index array, then in square brackets we specify one, then finally dot number. Finally, if we want to convert the whole JSON object to a string, we can call json.stringify, passing in the JSON object, the person in this example. Now, there are plenty of examples on the internet of using JSON objects in JavaScript. I suggest you check a few of those out, one of my favorite being the json.org website. Okay, so we received a request, we've done some processing, and now we need to send back a response to the mobile client. So again, check out the Node Express documentation for more information on what properties and methods are available for the response object. But let's dig in a little deeper to give you some examples of what you can do. Now, as we discussed earlier, the router is given both a request object and a response object as variables rec and res respectively. So it's through the response object called res that we will actually return a response back to the mobile client. Now, the simplest response we give is actually shown in the default JavaScript scaffold, as you can see here. This defines an empty JSON payload, then through the response send method, returns the empty payload along with a 200 success status code, completing the response to the mobile client. Now, you can do additional processing post the send call, but the opportunity to return a response is now passed. Now, if you don't have a payload, alternatively, you can just call res.send with a status code. And as you can appreciate, you can return any status code indicating success, failure, or whatever. What you do is actually up to you and what you write in your code. You can also set parts of the response one code line at a time, rather than just calling it all in one send method, such as calling res.status, res.type, res.json, and then res.end. Note how the end method terminates the response, so it's essential you set the parts of the response before finalizing the response by calling the end method. Now, sometimes you'll also see in some examples res.send followed by res.end. However, the res.end call is redundant as res.send also calls end, and the chance to append anything to the response has passed. But let's be clear here, let's emphasize the point again. Once the send call is made, you can continue to do further processing such as tidying up on the MCS side, but the response to the client has now been sent, so you can't append anything further to the response at this stage. Now let's return to this more simple example. Now, we're assuming we're returning a JSON object, so as you can see here, we can actually override this JSON object with a hard-coded JSON object in code and return greetings.hello world to the mobile client. But in reality, what you're more likely to be doing is actually relaying a payload from a custom API or a connector. So if we look at our existing code through the handler to call the connector or the custom API, the handler receives a body object. Now, if we happen to know the body is a JSON object, What's pretty common at this point is to lift the res.send method call into the hand of the light the following. Now, if the response isn't a JSON object, say an image was returned, you also need to set the content type via call to res.type. And if we want to set a custom HTTP header, we can call res.set, the header name, and then whatever the value for the HTTP header. Now, the very last thing we might want to do in our code is, well, actually write logs to assist debugging our actual code. 
And to raise logs, it couldn't be actually any simpler than it is here. You simply call one of the methods, console.severe.warning.info or config find finder of finest with a message, and that will log the message for you to the Oracle MCS Diagnostics. Then to view the logs, we access the diagnostic options within the MCS user interface, and in a later episode, we'll be looking through all of that so you get a good idea of how to make effective use of these logs. Well done, that's it. As you can see, the various code examples explained here, coding with Node.js and Express, is really rocket science. And with a few techniques under your belt, you're well on your way to building out your custom APIs with MCS. So stay tuned with us to learn more advanced techniques with Node and MCS to turn you into a Node expert in our following episodes. I hope to catch you in those soon.